makes me feel the most comfort is joining me, my husband, Sean, and we're gonna make his absolute favorite comfort food. Can you guess what it is? I think uh, by the ingredients, it looks like mac and cheese. Yeah, so. we're gonna make a healthy gluten-free baked mac and cheese, and it's so simple, you'll never buy the box kind again. I can guarantee you that. So okay. we're gonna start by making the cheese sauce. We already boiled some noodles, so you just wanna check whatever kind of noodles you use for this recipe, the box, how long to boil them for, about five to eight minutes, depending on what kind you use, and then just rinse them with cold water, and that stops the cooking process so that they won't get overcooked when you add them to a warm sauce. So to start the sauce, I'm gonna do one tablespoon of a good oil. So I like avocado oil or olive oil for this recipe. And then to that, I'm gonna add my oat flour. So I'm gonna add 1 fourth cup of oat flour. And you've seen this a lot today, and oat flour is a really good swap out for any time you use white flour when you're making a sauce or you're trying to thicken a sauce. You can just grab the oat flour. It'll work the same as white flour, but it's much better for you. Then I'll do one teaspoon of minced garlic. And I'm just gonna kind of whisk that together in the oil. Now, oftentimes I don't use oil in recipes, but if you need to add a tablespoon here or there, so just to kind of cook off this flour, it's absolutely okay. In fact, a little bit of healthy fat in our diets is good for us. So one tablespoon just to kind of brown off this flour is perfect. So I'm just, you can see I was just kind of cooking the garlic through and the flour through in the bottom of the pan there. Then we're gonna, I'm gonna have you add three cups of almond milk, but you could do any kind of milk that you like for this pour recipe. Pour it in. Yep. Okay. Just slowly kind of pour it in. Yep, there you go, perfect. And then once you add your milk, you're gonna wanna start to whisk. And what's gonna happen is you're gonna see that the milk starts to thicken up with that oat flour. So I'm gonna whisk it and I'm gonna turn the heat up to medium high. Then Sean, I'll have you add the two cups of cheddar cheese. Okay. Perfect. And then we have one half cup of Parmesan cheese. So you could really use different kinds of cheeses and swap them out as you like for this recipe, but I like the classic cheddar cheese and then the Parmesan adds a nice salty bite to it. We're gonna stir that in, and then I'm gonna have you add some seasonings. Okay. So we don't need a whole lot of salt for this recipe because we just did Parmesan cheese, which adds a really salty flavor. So one half teaspoon of salt is all you need. Okay. And then we're gonna do one fourth teaspoon of garlic powder. Okay. And this, right this here, one? yep, that's okay. garlic powder. And then one fourth teaspoon of paprika. You could also do a dry mustard powder or really anything that you like in your mac and cheese but just a little bit of garlic powder, salt, paprika is enough to really give it some bold flavors. So I'm gonna to continue to kind of stir that slowly until a thick cheese sauce forms. So Sean, I wanna ask you, when you think of comfort food, what, do you, what comes to mind? Definitely mac and cheese. Yeah. Um, pizza, even though it's not really a comfort food, but it's my comfort food. Yeah. Um, chicken nuggets. So all the things that he had from his childhood. <laughs> yes. And that's what we were saying today is that for the most part, when it comes to anything that is a comfort food, oftentimes it's because it brings us back to memories of our childhood or our past or really fun times that we can remember being with family and friends. Yeah. All right, so this looks like it's thickened up nicely, so I'm just gonna turn down the heat. And how you know is if it coats the back of a spoon nicely. So if you kind of roll your spoon oh, through yeah. it and it has a nice coating on there, that's how you know it's ready. That's a good tip. And if you find that it has lumps or chunks, you just wanna keep whisking out that oat flour until it kind of breaks down. So now we're ready to add our pasta. Okay. So we have one pound of cooked pasta. You can use any kind that you like. I like brown rice pasta. Sean and Maddie love it as well. So how does that look to you, Sean? It looks really good. And what's your absolute favorite <clears throat> comfort food when it comes to something that reminds you of your mom? Something that she made. Uh, she, she always made meatloaf when I was a kid. And um, I haven't, I haven't, thought about that in a while, but that was actually one of the meals that I remember her making for all of us that we all enjoyed. So. Yeah, this looks perfect. If you, you add too much pasta, you can always add a little bit of milk or a little cheese just to kind of break it up and thin it out a little bit. 
So Sean, I'm gonna have you lift this heavy dish okay. and I'll scrape it out into oh, this lift pan. This? Uh, no, this one. Okay. So it's hot. So let me gr grab okay. another oven mitt. So, and I'll scrape it out. So I'll just have okay. you kind of tip it like this. And if you don't have a big, strong husband here to help you do this part, call one of your neighbors and then tell them you'll give them mac and cheese. I guarantee you, you'll make new friends. So we have a 13 by nine pan here and I'm just gonna kind of dish it into there. And that looks absolutely delicious. It smells good too, doesn't it? It smells really good. It smells like garlic. Okay. And it will continue to thicken up a little bit in the oven as well. And so I'm gonna top it off with, you could either do breadcrumbs here if you like a crunchy topping, but Sean likes it really cheesy and melty, don't ya? So I'm gonna do a little bit more shredded cheese, about a half cup there. And then I'm just gonna pop this in the oven. It's already cooked through, so you just wanna kind of melt everything together and do a golden brown topping if you have breadcrumbs or melt the cheese on top. So 425 degrees for about 15 to 20 minutes will be perfect. And then it'll be time to eat. Can't wait. Thanks for making it with me.